Denise Galore, and this is Lit Happens, your celebration of the literary arts here in Saskatchewan. Today I'm very pleased to welcome Catherine Lawrence. Catherine is an award-winning poet, she's a playwright, she teaches writing, and she's just released her fourth book, Stay. Catherine, welcome to the program. Thank you, Danica. I'm so pleased with this book. I've had a chance to read the whole thing Great. just recently, and I'm, I'm just delighted. So this is, it, this book is quite unique. Do you want to just start by telling us a little bit about, about the format of this story? Mm -hmm. Right. So it's, um, it's uh, a novel in verse, and it's for young readers, grades four to eight, but mm, I hope, I hope uh, older readers pick it up as well. Um, a novel in verse is a genre that has been with us for a long time and uh, as a poet it's just seemed like a natural fit for me. Um, I'm a storyteller at heart and, and so the chance to, to put an entire novel together in the form of individual poems just was, just was a challenge I couldn't resist and it just seemed to work out beautifully for a young audience. Well, and when I first heard the term novel in verse, I thought it would be one long poem that mm -hmm. would tell us a story. And, and we're familiar with the long poem form. Right. But this is short poems, and they're all different types of forms and different rhythms and different mm -hmm. um, meters. And, and so it's really lovely. It, the voices are very strong. Yeah, you're a good reader. That's a, that's a, that's a really accurate interpretation. Uh, that was really deliberate because I learned that teachers and educators love the, this genre because it appeals to the reluctant reader who will uh, feel uh, instant mastery after reading just you know one page, two pages, and then of course the avid reader just gets all the figurative language and and blasts through it. But I wanted to I wanted to support. Uh, the classroom effort in uh, in delivering poetry because teachers do a great job these days of teaching poetry so so there's all kinds of um, variations with form uh, so that if a teacher is, is teaching poetry they can choose different examples and show 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 kids uh, uh, examples of what they might do with a prose poem or the haiku or a villanelle or or something like that. Well, mm -hmm. and, it, and it, it, it really is lovely in that way that it, it's a beautiful narrative. It, the story runs through it so clearly, but I can see taking one poem mm -hmm. and just getting that little glimpse at, at one five minutes or one afternoon that, that happens that you see sometimes in, in the poems. Yeah, I, I want to win over that reluctant reader. I mean, reading is just so, so important. It's, I think it's just critical to every child's development, everybody's life. Uh, if, if Stay wins over just one reader, then I've done my job. Well, then I think it, it has the capacity to win over adult readers who mm -hmm. don't really have that, uh, that love of poetry mm -hmm. that, that many of us have developed. Because it really is, it's something that, that takes reading. Mm -hmm. And people don't have that. Uh, they, they look at poetry and they're a little bit scared of it, I think. I know, they're afraid of the P word. It's very strange. <laughs> but, you know, I'm learning, you know, so this is my first young adult uh, uh, book. And... I'm learning that, you know, when I take my adult, so-called adult books to an adult reading, um, there's a certain level of intimidation among some members of the audience. But with kids, forget it. I mean, they're not afraid of poetry. Maybe they never will be. They're not intimidated. So it's really, really refreshing to read to kids. Well, why don't you read a little bit to us now? Okay. You can twist my arm. Um, I'll just set this up by saying that that stay, um, that stay is a love story. I've just realized that I've written a love story. I thought what I had written uh, was a story about um, a little girl named Millie who is coping with the, uh, the fact that her family's uh, breaking down, her parents are divorcing, and it is about that. Um, but at heart, it's a love story. Everyone loves one another in this book, despite the fact that it's not immediately evident to Millie. Um, so I'll read uh, two small pieces, and um, this piece is called Dad Behind the Ears. And so Millie's just um, coming to realize that, um, you know, what it means uh, to have, uh, to face the fact that, that Dad doesn't live with them anymore. Mom says nothing will change. 
same house, same school. She says, stop being so melodramatic. Caught me in the bathroom da dabbing dad's aftershave behind my ears. A glass bottle forgotten on his side of the cupboard. Cinnamon, vanilla, hint of boot leather. The everyday of my dad. His whistle while he shaved. Specks of black beard peppering the sink basin. Helping him choose a tie. Red plaid. Diagonal stripes. Daisy dots picked by the girl whose throat is now a Windsor knot. And then I have to say to the kids, Do you know, who, who knows what a Windsor knot is? And most of them put up their hand. <laughs> who can tie a Windsor knot, I say. No one puts up their hand. <laughs> this is called New Math. Four chairs at the kitchen table minus one dad equals an empty place I can't subtract from the meals we ate together. Dad's clown around jokes, holding a banana to his ear like a telephone his direct line to those monkeys in Ottawa, or serving our Friday night specialty, chicken ala daddy, deep fried and golden, mum's pink apron tied around his middle, white chef's hat from the dollar store perched on his head, Tara mum and me pretending we're part of a TV cooking show called One Dish Dad, and his, we're his studio audience laughing for real. It's my job to set the table every night for dinner, but I hate the new math in our house. Three plates, three glasses, three forks, three spoons, knife, knife, knife. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. There's so much that can be said in poetry in so few words, and that's one of the lovely things about this. And you talked about reluctant readers, but also people who, who don't have time to read very much. There's mm -hmm. something so lovely about hearing a story in so many words, and yet we have such vivid pictures painted, mm -hmm. and so many of the senses. We've, even in the two poems you read, we have taste, and we have smell, and we have things we see. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really, you've done a really good job of, of really bringing us in, in those few words on well, each page. Thank you. I wish, you're, you're the ideal reader. <laughs> I, w I tried really, really hard to write from the senses. And, and when I've been doing readings in the schools lately, I've been saying to the kids, like, just close your eyes and let these images just enter you. And don't worry about trying to make sense of things because the meaning will follow the images. And they just they just look at me and nod, like, yeah, they get that. <laughs> but these images are very clear. I know I listened to a poet earlier in the year talk about how sometimes a poem is so complicated that you have to put it in your pocket and carry it around for a while mm -hmm. before, you, before you understand it. But these are, there's such a clear story that, that's told. And you didn't just write this and then expect young people to understand it. You actually worked with young people as you wrote this book. I did. And um, like somebody asked me the other day about, about my writing process with respect to this book. And I realized that with my, with my other books, the so-called adult books, there's always, I'm always taking those poems to my writer's workshops. So workshopping is, is an absolutely essential part of the process. So uh, I needed, I needed a workshop. So I, without really thinking about what I was doing, I went to, I went to classrooms. Uh, in the city, I approached some teachers and asked if they would let me bring an early, early version of the manuscript into the class. And so these kids then workshopped this manuscript with me, and they're tough. <laughs> I went back to my desk and rewrote the whole thing several times before, before I felt like I was really meeting um, the expectations of really sophisticated kids, really, really savvy readers. Well, the, the hard work has paid off because it's really beautiful. Thank you. And that's all the time we have for today. Catherine, thank you so much for being on Lit Happens again. It's been a pleasure. I'm Danika Lohr, and this has been Lit Happens. You can find past episodes by going to YouTube and searching for Shaw TV Saskatoon. You can find me on Facebook or Twitter. And if you'd like to contact me, I'm at danikalohr at gmail.com. Thank you for watching.